All right, so it's, uh, I think, October 11th today. And man, it's cold. It's like freaking 45 or 44 degrees today. And uh, I know I'm get, setting up these cameras a little late, but so right up there is where we got our beans. I think they have an active scrape right there, right underneath this uh, apple tree. And um, I'm going to be setting up this stealth cam. We've had this thing for almost three or four years now. Right here, this is our only um, red flash cam that's going to be out. And I'm setting up a new Exodus Lift 2 trail camera that we just got yesterday. And I'm going to move my Browning to a different spot. My Lift 2 and my Browning Dark Ops are both going to be in the two um, areas I'm going to hunt more. This one is just going to be in this spot because I think they're running through here and crossing that ditch right down there. We'll be able to get anything that comes through right here. Got to really make sure you spray these cameras down right after you set them because those deer will come right up and smell them. And they're going to smell you for sure, all your human scent after touching all the cameras. This apple tree right here, they got a... I mean, look at the size of that track. It's hard to tell on the camera here, but you can see the back of this hoof there and the front is up here. Jeez. You can see, I don't want to step in the scrape, but those lines are from him dragging his um, paw across the ground there. But that's definitely active scrape right there from a buck. Pretty nice one, too. So, perfect licking branch, about shoulder high. Apple trees are some of the best um, trees for licking branches too, so real nice setup right here. Camera's right over there, so we'll hopefully we'll get a picture of him on here. And now that I get down here, I can almost smell like the buck urine, like he peed in the scrape. I can just, there's a strong rutting smell to it. It's a real nice setup, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set up an you know, expandable wick, put some doestrus. Dip this guy in doestrus, and I know these don't really last that long. They aren't really the greatest, but I should probably just leave it alone. But we'll try to set up one of these on it. I brought these out here so I'm to use them. So hopefully, that will get right in that scrape and bring them back. But yeah, I've used two of these already this year. and I'm not too impressed with them. They tend to easily fall off and sometimes this is all it takes is just a little extra scent like this to get this scrape going and then just the bucks and the does coming here in the future will just be enough to get it as an active scrape throughout the whole year. But I think this has been an active scrape for the last couple years, but I did come in here and spray a little circle to kill off the vegetation underneath it. But with this little overhanging branch, I think it's been an active scrape for at least two two years or so now. So. This will just spice it up a little bit, but I'm going to get on going, checking out the other spots before I got to get out of here. Look at this. This is a really good scrape right here from that, probably the same buck that was over there. And man, like I said, it's like November temps right now. It feels like the rut almost. I'm seeing all these scrapes. It's like literally 40 degrees out here. I'm freezing. Now, would you look at that? That is awesome. I came in here in probably July and sprayed off the vegetation underneath this, uh, mulberry tree because like I said apples mulberries basswoods oaks and even um cedars and pines are like the best trees for scrapes like maples and hickories and other tree species aren't as good like birch and etc but man I knew mulberries were good but look at that you can just tell he was just working that working that right underneath this licking branch which is a little bit high probably on the five foot scale I thought they'd be over there more I'll just take a look over here I don't really see much over here on this. This is where I was expecting them to go, but that's telling you that's a pretty good sized buck because he's got big tracks and this um, licking branch is probably four and a half, almost five foot high. And man, just look at that. Wow. So a quick little update on the soybean plot. And this right here is a little bit of the winter greens that I seed in like in late August and it's just coming in good. So I sprayed here and kind of killed off everything. I just figured I might as well seed something in there, but as you can see, the soybeans and corn and sorghum is all starting to die off in there. I don't want to walk in there. I don't want to leave too much human scent behind, but I'm just going to skirt the edge and kind of check out everything. This will be the last time I'm really, really intrusing, intruding our property here this, today. You can see all the, wow, look at all that wintergreens in there. I tell you, once all this grass dies off like it already is, 
dies off even more, you'll be able to see the lines just well, well defined in there where we planted multiple rows in between the pumpkins in there. Man, that looks great. I'm gonna keep on moving. And right here, I'll show you this quick. It's our switchgrass. That's all gonna be some nice switchgrass next year. Sorry we didn't get any footage of uh, planting that, but it was kind of late the night we did it. And uh, kind of, it was actually the first spot we put in switchgrass, so we didn't really know how good it was gonna grow. But as you can see, it looks like a lawn in there. It looks pretty, pretty nice. I know underneath this mulberry right here, I sprayed, we had to spray kind of as in the field edge here. I know it was a pretty active um, scrape like right over here, but I'm kind of expecting something to be along here this year. Maybe not this early, but maybe later on there'll be something around this tree here. It's a nice mulberry, so I'm going to keep on moving. And as I get right over here by this um, big scrape that I sprayed off, I don't see many tracks, there's a few tracks. Maybe a spot where you rubbed right there, but I can just smell that same old uh, urine, you know, that buck scent, so. One of them must have been here too, so that's a good sign. And this right here is another um, area that, where they've had a scrape for multiple years, I know. Real nice looking branch right here, perfect height on this cedar limb. In the past, I've seen actual claw marks from when they're digging in here, but I don't see any tracks or smell anything here today, so. They might start using it later, they might not, so we'll see. Alright, so I'm out in our, uh, one of our, our, probably our biggest basket field, like I said, this is the acre one. <clears throat> Man, would you look at those dink and radishes, holy crap. It's probably been a month since I've been out here. I can see brows on all the tops of all these dink and radish and a lot of this uh, forage, rape, and kale that's out here. Just look at that. That's probably a freaking almost a foot tall that's probably the biggest one but I mean there's some other ones in here again that are pretty nice size right here's an area that was kind of thin you can tell there's not much in here besides weeds because I, I see it in some uh, sugar beets but they didn't come up that great try not to walk around here too much but look at that that, one, that one's purple that's weird but there's just it's just loaded in here with deer brows and loaded in here with uh, dink and rash just look at that where they nipped that whole thing right off. That's like as big as your finger. So they're in here a lot. Just look at the size of that one in there. There it is. Wow. Amazing. I'm going to keep on moving along here. Yeah, it's really hard to tell, but there is just clover brows everywhere on the edge of this uh, field that I'm in. It's hard to tell on the camera, but you can see all those tops nipped off on the clover all the way along the edge here. I think when we did spray out here, we drove along this edge, we sprayed a lot of this natural browse on the edge of this whole food plot with the other growth, so it's definitely doing its job. I didn't see hardly any browse before we sp before we uh, sprayed the you know, the growth here, but you can see that too, man. It's just everything's nipped off. Everything on this whole edge, so. Wow. I just finished up that video and I noticed that there's two nighttime beds here. Right there and right here. Probably a doe and a fawn, and it could be another one right there. I know we have a doe with uh, twins out here, but uh, two or three nighttime beds right there, right on the edge of this food source. So definitely does, but that's still pretty cool. Right up here is another spot where I sprayed pretty heavily and uh, made a um, mock scrape here, but I don't see anything, so let's keep on moving. Right here is a freaking dink and radish that they're already completely ripping out of the ground. I know last year in our honey hole food plot, they didn't even touch our purple top turnips at all. They ate the greens, the tops of them, but they didn't even pull them out or munch on them at all. But it's um, October, I'm already seeing a lot more brows on the dink and radish. So I think next year, we're definitely going to plant more dink and radish and probably a little less purple top turnips. But we'll see what they do with the purple top turnips this year or later in the season. But I'm really liking what they're doing with the dink and radish so far. And this food plot right here is just a little higher up from that one down there I was just in. And this is one of our better looking um, brassica food plots this year. It goes over here a little bit too, but you can just see way over there where it's shorter. It's because it's shady. Out here in the full sun, it's probably like almost knee high in areas. So, man, that looks great. Don't really plan on hunting over this one at all. Or this one down here. Only chance I'd maybe hunt over one of these would be 
during the late, late season. If I still have a buck tag by then, which at this rate I might, so we'll see. All right, so I finally made it back to where our Browning Dark Ops camera is. Um, I'm gonna unscrew it from here and bring it right over there on that clover food plant. And I'm gonna swap out the cards, so if you guys stay at the end, well, unless you wanna skip to the end, I guess, but I'll put on um, all the pictures we have from the last two and a half, almost three weeks up at the end from this camera. Hopefully there's some bucks and hopefully there's, there should be a little bit of everything, but I'll even throw up some of the ones we had before it back in September. We had all, th all three of our main core bucks in this area right here in this food plot, so those will all be at the end. So right up there is our tree stand. This is our real nice looking clover food plot right here at the edge of our hard woods here. <clears throat> and I kind of picked this out to be my uh, I scraped tree a long time ago with a nice uh, American elm. Not really the preferably the best species, but it's a live growing tree right here. Got this one dripping right down to here too. I put it on this branch instead of these branches over here because it's a little further out. It's a little lower than these ones, even though this is the side I sprayed on. Next year, it'll probably be on that side. Of it. I should probably just do that right now, but I don't know. I think where I got it, it's dripping down. Hopefully, it'll be good enough, so we'll see. Alright, so I got that one all sprayed down and set up. This right here is the Browning Dark Ops, like I said before, so real nice camera. I'm really impressed with it so far. Hopefully we can get some pictures on this plot here. I know they're in here. I see lots of brows on all this clover. We sprayed pretty much everything up to here. All this, all the way up to here with Antler Grove. We left the front side closer to the stand unsprayed because sometimes it can be a little too attractive and they're like right underneath your stand, which you don't really want. So... We'll see how it works. Man, look at this plot. Holy crap. That is astounding. <laughs> right behind me here is the other honey hole plot. The first one we put in, I think it was like July 1st or 2nd. This is the one that was like full of weeds. I'll show you the clip right now. It was, it was like terribly weedy down here. And now you can see all these weeds all dying off because it's getting colder and ju just like I said the brassicas are just going to pop right up and it's going to look just as good as this one in about another two weeks when all these weeds just start to die and kind of fall over brassicas boom ready to be eaten so we got tons and tons of winter food out here this year for these deer awesome I mean earlier in the year I thought this would have been a really good spot to have a mock scrape that's why I kind of sprayed it here but <laughs> it ain't gonna happen now. Look at all this water. But I know this was a good spot for rubs because in the past there's been that's a fresh one from this year. First one I've seen on our property from this year. <laughs> Man, it is just flooded like crazy in here. I've never seen it this bad back here except in the spring. Man, it has just been a terribly wet year. Alright, so I made it to the edge of the swamp plot here. This is the area on our farm that has the most daylight deer activity and the most uh, deer brows in general. Man, this clover plot is looking great. I sprayed, I sprayed everything. This little uh, box elder tree here. We sprayed everything on the other side of that. Everything on this side, so this little corner right here next to the stand is uh, not sprayed. And even this corner, I see tons of deer brows in here. Just look at all that. So, I'm gonna work my way and try to set the trail camera up over on that side more. This right here is the Exodus Lift 2 trail camera. It's a $220 camera and they say they have a five year warranty but I don't know how true that really is. But this right here is the most expensive and probably the nicest camera we've ever had. And uh, I'd say probably about a month ago we came in and buried this oak limb right here off of a red oak. And I was gonna put a um, one of those scent wicks on here, but I don't think I'm going to do that now. This was supposed to be a scrape tree, but then we got all this rain, so... And 
Here's our water barrel, but we don't even need that right now. There's just the whole plot's got standing water in it. So it's making this a little harder. But I still can see tons of deer browsing here. I know they're in here, even though there's water. And you see all this red stuff in here? I don't know if this is a chicory, because I know there was some chicory with this mix, but you guys can comment down below what you think this is. I know I don't really know what chicory looks like, but man, they're just hammering the clover in here right now. Everything's got leaves browsed completely off, so it's looking real good. I can see tons and tons of deer browse on the clover. And hopefully this clover sticks around. I mean, I don't know how much it can handle with being underwater, but it should come back pretty strong next year. That's what I'm hoping. So I got this set on hybrid mode, which takes, you can set it to so many different um, things. Right now I got it set for one picture and it'll take a 20 second video. So when it gets triggered, it'll take a snap of picture and then it'll start the video. So, which is pretty cool. Um, not many cameras off of that. So I'm gonna get out of here now. I'm gonna spray this down and get out of here. So, man, I had to include this. I'm on my way out right here walking by our switchgrass planting. Look at this, this is a buckthorn that they completely destroyed. <laughs> and you can see it's all snapped off. Wow. <laughs> I had really no expectations that they would do anything to it. Right here on the edge, I was just kind of leaving it so it would uh, grow up and kind of thicken, thicken this side up here. But wow, look at that. Awesome. <laughs> That's only the second uh, fresh rub from this year that I've seen. So you can tell that was probably a you know, medium to small size dude. I don't think it was a big one because it only goes up to about a little bit past your knee, but it's kind of a smaller tree, so it's still pretty awesome. Alright, so this summer and leading into the fall, we've only gotten four different bucks on camera so far, and uh, this being the nicest one, I found his shed this previous spring, and man, he grew a ton from three to four, because I think he's a four-year-old now, and uh, he's just a real nice deer. This one being a two and a half year old, we got tons of pictures of him last year, but never found any one of his sheds. Uh, we got two year and a halfs, and uh, the night that the big one was here, I was on a public land, um, and I was thinking about coming here too. I almost came here, and if I would have came here, I would have hunted on this food plot, and I could have had him down already. So that was a little bit unfortunate there, but uh, I really hope you guys are having good luck this year, seeing some deer. I haven't seen much, but Hopefully I'll get some content to you soon. See you next time, guys. Mm -hmm.